And with the Earthrise leaders and voyagers out of the way, it's time for us to move on to the deluxes, or at least what I'm going to be covering of the deluxes. And we're going to start things off with the, well, kind of this guy, not exactly this guy. This is the little Siege Micromaster, Iron Tread, renamed from Iron Works. And this is the Micromaster version of, you guessed it, you guessed it, this guy. It is the Deluxe Class Ironworks. This little Earthrise offering absolutely blows me away because I said last summer, man, that I wanted to have the little MicroMaster bases updated. And lo and behold, here is the first of them. And we're going to look at this guy and all of his glory in the latest Got by True review. One hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most very humble host, Dennis Moulton, aka Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, that's right, man, hit that notification bell because it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, and L, the Autobot family, and have a look for me everywhere across social media. I love it when we get an opportunity to chit chat. Here, there, and everywhere. And this is the new Deluxe Class Ironworks. Now, last summer, I, a summer of 2019, I said that I'd love to have the MicroMaster bases updated when I looked at the G1 bases. And honestly, I'm kind of really blown away that we are getting that now. This guy can pull off both of his modes. Granted, he can go attached to other characters in the line. But this time around, the big difference is that he actually gets his own robot mode, which might be a little bit redundant since we already have his MicroMaster robot mode. But perhaps there's a way that we can kind of logically mesh these two. Anyway, without any further ado, let's head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. And here we have Ironworks. And I'm just going to show this right now. Here he is next to Iron Tread from the Siege 10 pack. A renamed version of Ironworks. Any of you who have been following the channel for any length of time, you'll know that we looked at the G1 Ironworks back in episode 530. And I said overall that that G1 base and MicroMaster was an 8. Again, I'm very, very happy that we have the base and the MicroMaster here. And we even have to boot that the base itself can turn into a robot, which I sort of have an idea about how I can sort of justify and incorporate that in the future. Nevertheless, before we jump into Ironworks, who I am excited about, let's look very quickly at his packaging first. It's Earthrise packaging. We have the crane on the side. Looks beautiful. I absolutely dig it. Again, on the back, the product images, regular Earthrise art on the side looks great. Let's jump into the character. And silly me, I forgot to mention that he comes, of course, with very nice, bright instructions. There are uh, some stats up here. It's all in Cybertronian. Um, I haven't translated it. I, I don't know. He's a nice boy. That's all I can tell you. And now we can kick things off by looking at this big lad and he's next to his little lad because I wanted to point something out. The paint, the yellow paint that's used on the deluxe offering, first of all the guy slathered in paint. The paint that's used on him is this like milky, this weird milky yellow but it's the pretty much the exact same shade as the plastic that's used on the MicroMaster. I love how these two tie together just as they should. In terms of paint, well, I'm going to give it a 10. We don't really have something to compare it to per se. I suppose we do in base mode, but everything works so well here and there's so much of it and it's such a, like a deep construction industrial type of coloring that's on him that I think it works really well. Some could argue and say the black plastic at certain points seems to be coming through the yellow paint a little bit, but I think that that kind of gives it almost like a gritty construction type of texture. So 10, what about the articulation for the guy? The articulation is excellent, but weird. 
Starting at the bottom, we do have a little bit of an ankle tilt on mine. It's not much and it's very tight. Maybe it goes further on some people's copies, but not on mine. The hips, soft ratchet forward. They can't really go back because of this piece. Out to the side, no problem. Thigh swivel, waist swivel, but the waist swivel again is hindered because of the way that the back is here. The shoulder can go all the way around. We get 90 degrees on that elbow and the hook can twist and all the way out to the side. On the other arm, again, we can go all the way out to the side, we can go all the way around, but then this time we have like a super duper deep elbow and we have no wrist. So this one has a wrist and 90 degrees. This one goes super duper deep. No wrist. Go figure. And we have a head that can go left and right and kind of look up and down a little bit. Um, honestly, all things considered, I would say that the articulation is a solid nine and a half, I guess. It's weird. The arms are weird, but it's because they have to be that way for the transformation. So we have a 10, we have a nine and a half. Great start, 9.75. Because this guy falls under the whole weaponizer gimmick, obviously he's going to parts form to transform. If you don't like that, then you're not going to like this guy. I love the versatility that it offers, if I'm being perfectly honest, and I think it works for the weaponizers. I loved them all in the Siege line, with my favorite being Brunt. In fact, Brunt is one of my favorites of my entire collection. With this guy, it's a little bit different. First, we never did have a robot in like his G1 form. He was just like a base that turned into a, like a battle station, basically. So, that being the case, I kind of look at it like this. The little MicroMaster is the main body for Ironworks. However, when it's called upon, when he really needs to defend something, when he needs to be a heavy hitter and bigger, I have it kind of in my own head canon that he's able to transfer his consciousness from this smaller body into the base itself to transform into a bigger robot. I'm cool with that. Yes, it's kind of my own thought process and nothing official, but I dig it. So, to do the conversion, we pull that out. It's his blaster. It comes into two parts. We pull off the two arms. We pull off the legs. We come to the back and we pick off this piece and then we pick off this other piece which has the hips attached to it and we're left with this core. That's where we're to. We're going to go to kind of his construction base mode first. We turn the head around and we put it down there and then we come here and there's a black peg right here. It's hard to get out but there you go. There you go. It's a little, it's a little tricky to get out. But this is it, really, for kind of the core. Let's kind of deal with the um, uh, legs next. So here's one leg, and simply put, we take the thigh and we put it all the way down to the calf, and that's that's it. That goes like that. Then the other one will look like that. Now these pieces actually do not combine with each other, which, which brings us to the first arm. And that would be this arm. So we open out another peg here and we fold the arm all the way up. There's a, a little peg and a port that snaps together. Now we have a peg here that's black, a peg here that's gray. And wouldn't you know it, the two legs have peg holes here and here just perfect for the arm to slot into so that it looks like this. Now obviously this will lay, that, lay down flat, but you can see how it kind of slots together. We're going to have a ramp come off of this section here. We're going to have a ramp come off of this section here. And then this back section using, uh, I think this peg over here, is where we're going to attach that main body and the crane. So when we lay it down flat, it looks more like this. 
probably exactly what you would expect. And then we can come over here and we take this piece and it should, it's tight to slot this in. Slot that piece in and then with this other piece, you want to actually fold, I find, fold those pieces back and then this piece in this direction, you want this hip piece to be more out toward the front, but in this direction, you're going to slot it in here over, I guess, the yellow arm piece. The paint on there makes that connection super tight, so I'm just gonna do it off camera to keep life easy. Now that I've got this piece in, we can take the blaster and take it apart, and there's a little nub right there, and I think this fits on over the little nub, maybe this way? I thought it fit on the nub, maybe it doesn't, maybe it fits in the hole? I thought it fit, I thought it fit. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a little hole here next to the nub. I guess the nub is for a blast effect and the hole next to it is for this piece to go into. Okay, weird. Um, my mistake, pardon me, what do you want? Such is life. Okay, so that being said, then we come to the main body, which we have a couple of things to do. So we're gonna go to that before we incorporate it here because we're gonna use this one peg on the yellow arm to incorporate this piece on. Really what ends up happening is that there's a peg right here and that's going to go on there. But there's more to prep this before we peg it on there. Okay, so what do we do to prep this? Well, we turn this around and then this piece will peg on over a peg down there. You'll see now that this stands taller because that gives it the height it needs later on when we attach it. We also, using the peg that we flipped out on the chest, take the arm and using the hole there, not the shoulder peg, using the hole on the other side, we can, assuming that I can do this without making this peg go back down in the body, which it does like to do, we should be able to peg on the crane. Now, we should be able to take this whole piece and in this orientation, use a peg right here to tab into the other yellow arm. And we get this handy dandy base. It's able to connect to other bases with the same system on this side and on this side and on this ramp. Uh, you can see from the front, I'm just gonna kind of show this going around. You can see this is the other part of the blaster that I talked about. Here's how things should look on the back. And on this side, and kind of back around here to the front. And of course, our little ironworks lad can come up there and man the construction station just as he should. But that's not the only station mode that we have. No, we also have this guy able to convert into his battle station mode. So we can take this out of it. And now, once again, we can start to take everything apart. This comes off, this, piece here comes out, this piece comes off, this piece comes off, the two legs come out, and now, just so you can see how tight of a fit this was, see, even getting it apart is a challenge, and we take that out, and I'm happy to say that this piece, this arm, is already transformed. This is exactly how this is going to stay. It will be right at the very tippy top, but we're gonna start this conversion at the bottom. And for the sake of expediency, I thought I would start him out in his little bridge mode first. So we take both legs, we still have the thighs folded down into the calf of the leg. We open up the flaps on the sides of the two legs. We also switch the position of the legs, like by right, this leg in robot mode is the one that's on this side of the robot and vice versa. We take the uh, like single piece and we insert it between the two legs and attach it to both of the flaps. It's very, very important that you note that the little attachment piece on this centerpiece, it's not on the back end here, it's only on the front. That little attachment piece 
needs to be facing the same way as the red paint on the front of the leg. So that we can do this and push this down and bring this leg up over and bring this leg up over and bring them together. We're going to attach something to hold these legs together. Then we're going to um, attach another piece out front here. So the piece, as you might guess, that attaches to the top uses the two peg holes that are in the bottoms of the feet of this guy. We're going to use the two pegs here. We used one of these in the other base mode. Now we're going to use both of them to peg the kind of chest piece into the top here. I just wanted to back it up because things are getting a little tall here now. We have this together and we can open up this chest and bring it all the way down. On the original G1, this was a like a yellow kind of bucket piece and you could, you know, obviously leave it there for the MicroMaster to stand in and I guess man the base. Um, here, I, I, don't, I don't think it would support the weight, honestly, unless I'm missing a part of the transformation, which is, uh, you know, very possible. Um, nevertheless, it looks good there. We don't have a section that opens up up top that brings out like a, a windmill type of piece. That's a little bit unfortunate, but such is life. What we do have is the ability to use the peg that's up here and use the peg hole that's on the yellow arm that stayed folded up. And it's, man, it's tight. It is a tight, bit, but there, we can put that in. This now can be a platform that our little MicroMaster guy can use, and we can bring in this other piece, flip out our little sections here, and attach this to the front in like that. And then we can take our other arm, put the blaster in it, and using this peg down here, again, we can at least bring up one of these, and we can put that on over there, and boom. Now, I mentioned that he probably can't really stand in this. I don't think it's documented in the instructions how to do this. What they do document is the other base mode, and kind of how you can use all of the like bits and pieces on other characters. Like you can use the legs to become a pair of shoes. You can use a couple of pieces of shields. Obviously this is a weaponizer so it can be used on other characters that have five millimeter ports and pegs and everything else. I don't really, I don't really have an interest in doing that myself, but I'm sure that everyone has seen it for now. It just adds more versatility to it. But nevertheless, in this mode, you can naturally take our little MicroMaster and put him, well, maybe put him here, here. Put him right there with it and we have the kind of base, we have the MicroMaster, we have the whole set. Look, he's a robot that's highly functional. The transformation is not hard. Honestly, I'm gonna say it's, it's solid nine. For sure, it's a solid, solid nine. At the oh. end of the day, he's extremely versatile, just as all of these weaponizers have been. If you don't like parts forming, you're not gonna like this guy. If you're cool with it, then this guy offers you a plethora of options. I think I preferred the vehicle alt modes of the siege weaponizers, but that being said, I did say not long ago, just last summer, when I looked at the G1 versions, that hey, if they gave us updated versions in Siege, or now in Earthrise, I would be totally in for it. And you know what? I absolutely am. This guy is fantastic. Whoo, man, I do love me a weaponizer. And this guy does not disappoint at all. The robot mode is, like, it's kind of abstract and asymmetrical. And granted, the two arms work differently, but they both work well and effectively. Like, okay, this one has a deeper elbow, but this one has a wrist swivel for his, his hook hand, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I love this. I think the robot mode looks so good. I, I love the way that they did the yellow paint over the black plastic. It looks and feels industrial. 
This guy is a terrific robot. The tolerances, at least on my copy, are fantastic. He's a terrific construction site, I guess. He's a pretty great little base. And though I didn't show it for the sake of expediency, he can kind of become a, like a bunch of different parts and go attached to like different characters. I, I mean, you could, you know, as an example here, um, you know, th like you can put that in, there's a peg right there. You can put that on the foot of someone and it gives them like boots with like shin guards. Um, you know, there's an option of something that you can do with him, as weird as that is. You can take, let me get that on, you can take something like, you know, this piece off, and it can go over pegs, for example, and when it goes over pegs, it can become a shield. Um, the, if I can get this back on now, there. If, uh, if you take off his arm, for argument's sake, uh, again, there's two different sort of five millimeter pegs on this, as well as a port. Uh, I, I, I don't know. You could make it like a third arm, an extra blaster. I don't know. There's a ton of things you can do with it. And because this guy is almost never ending, that's why he kind of gets a high score. The weaponizers are fun, they're functional, but if you don't like parts farming, I mean you're really against it, then these bases, this guy isn't going to impress you. None of the other ones will impress you. You have to take it for what it is. Personally, I like the notion of being able to trade consciousnesses. Con consciousness is? I don't know if that's conscious nigh? Conscious eye? I don't know what the plural is, but you get the point. I like that we can kind of interplay these two because it makes sense for display options. And I assume that we'll be able to do the exact same thing with the others later on down the line. For now, let me know what you think of Ironworks. Do you think he's a slam dunk or a dud? You know I love to hear from you guys. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out so very much. Don't forget, if you're in a position to help the channel to grow, there is a donate link down in the description. Most especially, don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every day, you do make a difference. You do. And I want you to know that I very much look forward to the next time, man, that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way, as always, right here inside the videos.